field now assembling side by side, and that means we are moments away from that world famous, world famous four wide salute to the fans presented by Whiskey Myers. And we want you to take a picture of that four wide posted to social media using the hashtag WM4 wide for a chance to win two tickets to the Whiskey Myers show of your choice and an autographed copy of their latest album, Torneo. Field makes their way into turn three. And now to corner number four where they get the signal to show you the most awesome sight in all of motorsports. Whiskey Myers presents the World of Outlaws four wide parade lap. The drivers are thanking you for your attendance this evening. And in return, we want you to stand and make some noise. We lost the P8. Silver Dollar Speedway, you wanted the best. You got them for a breast. Often imitated, never duplicated. The greatest show on dirt, the world of outlaws. No energy drink sprint car. Back into side-by-side -side formation now as the pace vehicle gets set to pull to the infield and we get ready for 30 laps of green flag action. Caleb Henry and Ryan Timms from the front row. Andy Forsberg and Tanner Holmes in row two. Logan Shewhart and Dylan Bloomfield in row three. Brad Sweet and Kyle Larson in row four. Tanner Carrick and Landon Brooks in row five. Then James McFadden, Justin Sanders, Brock Zierfoss, Mitchell Facinto, Noah Gash, Sheldon Hodgeshield, Corey Day, Caleb Montgomery, Willie Croft, Colby Thornhill, Jesse Adar, John Clark, Dawson, Hamas, and Sean Becker. Feature action underway as Caleb Henry wheel stands down the front stretch. He'll still lead the field into corner number one. Ryan Timms coming after him on the top, and Timms, your new leader at the midpoint of the back straightaway. Ryan Timms pacing the field into turns three and four. Caleb Henry runs second in third. Tanner Holmes, Andy Forsberg, fourth, and Logan Shewart rounds out the top five. Kyle Larson trying to make his way to the inside of Dylan Bloomfield in the race for the sixth position. Ryan Timms leads it at the Silver Dollar Speedway very early on night number one. Track starting to slicken off a little bit and widen out a little more than I anticipated. There's still a lot of grip on the very bottom, but Dominic Selzy, it is getting a little slippery in the middle of the racetrack. Yeah, check out Corey Day. He's just about to crack the top 10 from 17th in three laps. Corey Day on the move early in the number 14. Leader approaching the back of the field. Traffic soon to be a factor. Trouble, car into the wall. Hard out of turn number four and upside down, Justin Sanders. Red flag conditions on the speedway. Justin Sanders battling for position. There was contact. Sanders got over the banking into the wall. John, you said it best. This track has slicked off way faster than you and I both thought. Um, there's still some grip out there, but it's going away very quickly. Report over the World of Outlaws radio system, Justin Sanders okay in car number 2X. 
That's heartbreaking. Justin has been so dominant over the last two, three years out here in the West Coast. You know, that elusive outlaw win is so hard to get, and uh, it's not going to happen tonight. Tom, earlier you and I were talking about the uh, nuances to Silver Dollar Speedway, and one of those being the fact that if there's a problem on the top side in turn number four, especially a little contact coming out of that corner, it is a fairly quick drop-off to that unforgiving wall. Absolutely. If you get your right rear over the bank there off of four, it, the, the opposite banking, it sucks you directly into the fence, and that's exactly what we saw with the two car. Um, you know, With it being as dark as it, as it is up there with the racetrack grip, Probably didn't even see he was hanging hanging himself over the edge. So the red flag is displayed with four laps complete. We'll go downstairs to Chase Rodman. Yeah, just getting a look at the damage here for the 2022 Knoxville Nationals Rookie of the Year, hey, the Justin Sanders. A lot of damage on the right rear. Both rear arms are knocked off, but the right rear shock is broke. Radius rod back here. Jacob's ladder. A lot of suspension damage to the 2X. They're not going to be able to fix this thing and get it back out there. Justin's going to stay in the car, it looks like. But, man, what a season he has had. Like Dom was kind of talking about there, 12 wins just this season. And, uh, man, he has been a force to be reckoned with here on the West Coast over the last couple of years. And, uh, man, second here at the Gold Cup in 2017 after leading the first 11 laps of that feature event. Thank you, Chase Rodman. So the running order when we go back to green flag action will look like this. Ryan Timms is your race leader in car number 5T. Caleb Henry restarts second in the 17M. Tanner Holmes third in the 18T. Andy Forsberg runs fourth. And Logan Schuhart rounds out the top five. Dylan Bloomfield restarts in the sixth position. Kyle Larson runs seventh. Landon Brooks in eighth. Brad Sweet ninth. And Sheldon Hodenschild in tenth. Corey Day restarts 11th, and Dom, you pointed out he was on the move early on in this one. You know, last year at a race here in May, he was running second, possibly leading, got a flat left rear with maybe 15 to go, drove from the back and ended up third. I'm telling you what, he, you can't count him out. The kid's incredible, especially up here on the top. So as long as he's got a clean, up, clean lane up there, he, who, who knows where he's going to end up. We saw something similar happen last night in the 360 race here when Kyle Larson spun early, had to go to the rear of the field, charged all the way back up to second. We'll go downstairs for more from Chase Rodman. Now, John, I just want to correct myself there. I, I don't want to take anything away from my friend Michael Buddy Kofoid. He was the Rookie of the Year at Nationals this year. Justin Sanders was a close second. I wanted to correct myself there. <laughs> Thank you, Chase. Engines come back to life with the World of Outlaws NOS Energy Drink Sprint Car Series. So, Dom, as you and I talked, the track is slickening off a little bit more than we anticipated, a little bit more quickly than we anticipated. How many of these guys do you think it's caught by surprise as well with the drivers out there? A good telltale is how far the wing's back. Right now, nobody looks like they're panicking too much. I know the, the 1S, he's got his wing. You know, it looks like a quarter of the way back, but everybody else is pretty far forward. So that, that tells me as a driver out there that everyone might be a little bit tight to start. So maybe they plan for it. I, w I would say if there was a guy with his wing halfway back, three-quarters of the way back right now, he's probably cursing himself. So right now, oh, the 83's got his wing back as well, the 83V. So there's a couple guys with some angle in it. But right now, if you didn't plan on it being slick, you, you, you messed up. We talked about Ryan Timms becoming the youngest driver ever to finish on the podium with the World of Outlaws. He did it the day after his 16th birthday at the Red River Valley Speedway in Fargo, North Dakota. Now, again, this is not a full points World of Outlaws race. It is a split field, so it does not count as a full World of Outlaws win. Should he win the feature tonight, he would not supplant Somebody I know very, very close to you is the youngest driver ever to win with the World of Outlaws. Yeah, you know, funny story. When my brother beat that record, I, I think it was 2018, we, I was here. And uh, I was parked over there by the Outlaw Command Center where the, they're doing the scales. We were parked out over there. And I rolled over to Willie Croft's trailer, and I saw my brother had just passed David Gravel. And I thought it was maybe for the heat race or the dash. I didn't even know they were running the main event and got to watch the last handful of laps. So winning a race like this at, at you know, 16, 17, 18 years old, you know, Kevin Swindell was the first to do it as a super young gun. It's incredible, and, and it really it shows that if you do it at a young age, if you beat the Outlaws at a young age, you've got a hell of a career ahead of you. And even though this doesn't count, I can tell you right now, if you win one of these, you're going to count it for yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. Field now set to line up once again in single formation before we give them the uh, signal to go double.
All right, Dom, I'm going to put you on the spot here with a double file restart coming up for the first time this evening. If you're the race leader, which lane do you choose right here? Well, being up here, if I'm Ryan, I'm choosing the outside, and I'm going to try and go pretty early. Um, you know, th that can bite you if you get tight against the cushion when you go green. But right now, I'm thinking the center of the corner on the bottom is just a little bit slow. I'm choosing the outside, and I'm going to go as early as I possibly can and hope Mike lets me go. Caution flag, or I should say red flag, takes the field out of traffic. Ryan Timms was quickly closing on the back of the field. Usually that lucky number is seven. So it's usually seven laps to get into lap traffic if you're the leader. Um, with double file restarts, that might pump it back to eight or nine laps, but they're going to get there quick. Timms chooses the inside lane. So Ryan Timms choosing the bottom of the speedway. Again, on the double file restarts, unlike the initial start when the front row has to be side by side at the stripe, the double file restart, the leader is allowed to be the first to fire, and he can do so anytime once he reaches the seafoam restart zone between turns three and four. If I'm Ryan and I chose the bottom, I'm going to go as late as I possibly can to try and get in that grip and hope the 17 car can uh, you know, muscle around me on the front straightaway. Caution, lights out. We get set to come back to the green flag. Four in the books, 26 remaining. Ryan Timms, the leader, brings them into corner number three. Back to green, Tanner Holmes to the inside, takes second, looks for the lead, Tim's right back underneath him. Ryan Tim's and Tanner Holmes trading sliders for the top spot and Logan Shewhart moving forward in the 1S. Ryan Tim's maintains the lead, Holmes in second, in third, Caleb Henry, Logan Shewhart now at the fourth and all of a sudden Kyle Larson in the top five. Larson now looks to the outside of Logan Shewhart, Shewhart to the inside of Tanner Holmes, can't make the move, slides up high. Larson to his inside, Kyle Larson now to fourth. Sheldon Hottenshield on the move. Sheldon from 16th now, battling for a top five spot. Ryan Timms once again beginning to pull away from the field. Shewhart and Larson continue their duel for the fourth position. Kyle Larson fourth out of turn two. Timms out in front, caution on the speedway. Landon Brooks in the number five V, I believe, stopped at the end of the back straightaway, sort of facing the wrong direction. Corey Day from 17th to 8th now. And, man, I'll tell you what, the 18 car, he made a hell of a move on that first start. Tanner Holmes was really good on that restart. And I'm guessing he's going to be starting on the bottom again, so he might be able to do it again. Sheldon Hodenshield, big moves as well from 16th up to the 7th spot. This is about as good as you see, Chico. It, it starts getting slick like this. There's a little bit of grip on the bottom, big curb on the top. It's just incredible watching these cars go around. So once again, Ryan Timms choosing the inside lane for the upcoming double file restart in the Seafoam Restart Zone. What a year Ryan Timms has had, and he just turned 16 two weeks ago. Eight, four, ten sprint car wins, two victories in 360 action, and yeah, throw a midget win in there as well. You're definitely seeing the, the future of the world of outlaws right here with Corey Day and Ryan Timms. Those two kids, they got a lot of racing ahead of them and a lot of wins ahead of them, and I, I see both of those guys being on the tour by the time they're 20 years old. Caution lights out. We'll come to the green. Green flag waving again. 
Caleb Henry did a better job staying with Tims and now moves to the inside with a slider to take the lead down the back straightaway. Caleb Henry leading it and Logan Schuhart up to challenge for the second spot. Caleb Henry leads lap number nine. Tims right back to his inside. Kyle Larson battling for the top spot as well. Ryan Tims back to the lead and Larson takes the second spot. Kyle Larson now tries to make it work down low. Slides high out of quarter number four. Ryan Timms leading it. Caleb Henry sliding. Kyle Larson. Larson turns it back underneath him. James McFadden and Sheldon Hottenshield race for the fifth spot into three and four. Logan Shewart now to the inside of Caleb Henry. Looks for the third spot into quarter number one. Henry's got the momentum on the cushion. Maintains that position. 12 laps down and Kyle Larson is catching Ryan Timms. Corey Day slides up in front of Sheldon Hodenshield. Corey Day now sixth. Traffic soon a factor for the race leader. Ryan Timms with Kyle Larson gaining ground in every corner. Sheldon Hodenshield tries to move around the outside of Tanner Holmes. Sheldon Hodenshield now the battle for the lead. Kyle Larson gets by the inside of Ryan Timms to take command. Kyle Larson leads lap 14. Ryan Timms trying to stay with him. Heavier traffic now in front of the race leader. Larson slides to the cushion. Ryan Timms right behind him. Looks to the inside in turn one. Slides Larson. No, he doesn't. He thought about it but ran out of room. That allows Kyle Larson to pull away. And now Henry to the inside of Timms for second. Caleb Henry slides up in front of Ryan Timms. Henry on the outside. Timms down low. They both gain ground on Larson. Timms to the inside in one and two. Here's Henry to the inside out of the quarter. Logan Schuhart is right there. Top four make it the top five with Corey Day as part of the mix in heavy traffic out of turn number four. Day to the inside of Shewhart. Corey Day now up to fourth. Ryan Timms all over. The 57 of Kyle Larson in traffic. He moves to the inside and takes the lead back at least for the moment. Larson tries to power to the inside, but Ryan Timms is the leader once again. Kyle Larson back to the bottom in one and two, but Ryan Timms has command. Caleb Henry to the outside. Can't rest the second spot away from Kyle Larson. 19 laps complete, 11 laps to go. Ryan Timms back in front with a slower car between himself and Kyle Larson who works to the inside in turn number one. Caleb Henry with momentum out of turn number two. Another run on Kyle Larson with the slower car in the way. James McFadden now up in to the fourth position. Logan Shewhart in fifth. Brad Sweet a late race charge now. Up to seventh for the big cat. Ryan Timms took the lead back from Kyle Larson. You don't see that very often. Tim's to the inside, slid up to the cushion, couldn't get by the slower car. Top pair work the cushion in turns three and four. Larson right on the back bumper. Now moves to the inside in traffic. Slide job for the lead. Tim's tries to come back to the inside, but Kyle Larson leads again. Larson to the inside of the slower car. Ryan Tim's bound up on the cushion. Corey Day over the edge off of two. Corey Day's amazing run from deep inside the ninth row comes to an end. 22 laps complete. And it saves the lead for Ryan Timms. And we're inside of 10 laps. Now we're into single file restarts. I am so impressed by Ryan Timms because you don't see Kyle Larson take the lead from a 16 year old and get passed back again. I'm not sure if Ryan got the memo who he's racing because he's not phased an ounce. That just goes to show the talent and, and the speed that that car has and the driver has right now. I mean, my goodness, he honestly, he's, he's completely unfazed, and he, I think he might be faster than Kyle in open air. So eight laps to go. We might hit traffic there at the very end. Uh, being a single file restart, it might be a little bit earlier than that, but boy, oh, boy, if he can set a good enough pace, he might be able to walk off into the sunset. Also impressed by the... Uh, 
intestinal fortitude for Ryan Timms to come back and lead like this after missing the show the first two nights at Skagit. Absolutely. That shows how hard outlaw races are. You know, you can go from running second podiuming to missing the next two races and barely making the third one. And it's not a, a knock on a driver or a team. It's just that hard. If you're off a little bit, they take a mile. Ryan Timms, the leader. Kyle Larson runs second. Caleb Henry is third. James McFadden restarts fourth. And Logan Shewhart fifth. Sheldon Hoddenshield sixth. Brad Sweet seventh. Tanner Holmes runs eighth. Andy Forsberg now ninth. And Mitchell Facinto into the top ten. Look, we know Kyle Larson is the reigning. Caution lights out. Coming to green, you see the cone actually move back on the racetrack just a little bit, nearly at the exit of corner number four. Still eight laps remaining for Ryan Timms, who is on the throttle. A little bobble on the cushion there. Larson will be much closer into turn one this time. Now he dives to the bottom to look for the lead. Timms has the momentum and sees in the top spot. What a move around the cushion in one and two by Ryan Timms. Timms the leader. Second, Kyle Larson. Sheldon Hodges over the inside of James McFadden. They got close there in turn number two. McFadden holds on to fourth. Larson keeping pace with Ryan Timms out in front of the field. Larson on the right rear over the cushion slightly at the exit of turn four. Car slowing in is Logan Schuhart. Logan Schuhart stopping over the edge of the banking in turn number one. The defending Gold Cup champion. Boy, Ryan pushed it hard when Kyle slid him. There was, uh, there was no other strategy than to drive around him, and it worked, and, and he left him for a little bit. Logan Shewhart has had a rough West Coast swing. He really has, and, and honestly, it's just a, you know, kind of a product of the racetrack right now. The, the cushion is pushed over the edge of four, and that's where you're seeing Tim's and Larson both start to get tripped up. That's making it extremely hard. You're going to start seeing those guys pull up, pull away from the cushion now. We'll take a look at the Dirt Vision replay, see if we can determine what happened here. Brad Sweet looking to slide the 17 of Sheldon Hoddenshield, and yeah, right behind them, just Logan Shewhart up over the cushion and spun. It's so easy to do, and when the cushion gets, you know, real choppy like it does here, once it gets to the very edge, it's easy to get yourself too plugged into it and uh, find yourself out in the daisies. What, if anything, can you do as a driver when you see something like that in front of you? Sheldon, maybe a little bit of a bicycle there on the cushion, and you're right behind him. What, what happens there in that process? It's so hard because when, when the cushion gets choppy like that, once you get your right rear against it, a lot of times you're plugged in and you're stuck. You can't really get away because it's slick on, the, on your left rear. You can't pull away and drive away from it. So a lot of times all you can do is turn yourself sideways and try and at least get some tire spin away from that. But um, you know, more than likely, you, you, sometimes you'll see guys just not even do anything because they know they're stuck anyways they may as well try to uh, you know hopefully miss them caution lights out once again six laps remaining on the opening night for the world of outlaws in the gold cup race of champions presented by Reby's napa auto parts What a turn down to the bottom of the speedway for Ryan Timms to bring him back to the green, but that opens up the inside lane in turn one for Kyle Larson. Timms back to his inside. Larson has the lead at the end of the back straightaway. Kyle Larson with the veteran move to take a lead, and now Timms is sideways bicycling through three and four. Somehow manages to hang on to it. Kyle Larson now gone. Tim's trying to hold on to second. James McFadden right behind him in third. Caleb Henry fourth and Brad Sweet in fifth. Now Sweet to the inside of Henry for the fourth spot. Bangs the cushion in turn number four, but completes the pass. Andy Forsberg looking to move into the top five. Shelvin Hodgill just behind him. Kyle Larson a little bobble on the cushion, but maintains the race lead with three laps to go. Shelvin Hodgill sliding. Andy Forsberg makes the pass. Sheldon up to sixth. Traffic for the leader, Kyle Larson. He'll come to the two to go signal and nearly gets into the 55 D of Dustin Hamas. Slides up in front of that car out of turn number two. White flag will wave this time for Kyle Larson. Looking for his first Silver Dollar Speedway win in 10 years. 
to the inside of the slower car into corner number one. Grabs the cushion, rockets down the back stretch for the final time. Larson to the high side in three and four and down to the checkered flag. Kyle Larson wins the opening night of the Gold Cup. Second to Ryan Timms, James McFadden third, Brad Sweet fourth, and Caleb Henry in fifth. Unofficially, the top 10. Kyle Larson with the win. Ryan Timms in second. James McFadden third. Brad Sweet fourth. Caleb Henry fifth. Sheldon Hoddenshield sixth. Andy Forsberg seventh. Sean Becker eighth. Mitchell Facinto ninth. And Tanner Carrick rounding out the top 10. And yeah, I know Ryan Timms wanted to win that one very badly. But Kyle Larson made the veteran move to take the lead, and then how Ryan Timms held on to the car in three and four there, I have no idea. Truly incredible. I mean, he, he really didn't do anything wrong. He got a bad start, the previous start around the cushion, and he tried to change it up. You can't fault the kid for trying. He's thinking well beyond his years, and, uh, you know, unfortunately he had the, the, in my opinion, the greatest of all time behind him. You just don't beat Kyle Larson. That guy is so good. And for the fight that Ryan put up against him and only is, what, fifth or sixth World of Outlaws start ever, I, I'm impressed. I'm beyond impressed. And Sean Becker, real quiet from 24th or 23rd all the way up to 7th. 24th, eighth. the eighth spot for Sean Becker. What a racetrack. I mean, that turned out to be a phenomenal race all through the field. Top, bottom, slide jobs there at the end. It got really technical on the top. It was impressive. The Silva Motorsports number 57 comes to a stop on the front stretch. Silva, car owner and crew chief, checking out the right rear tire there. Big congratulations to the race winner, Kyle Larson. He'll head up top to celebrate the win on the opening night of the Gold Cup Race of Champions presented by Reeves Napa Auto Parts. Full wing dance here this evening. We'll get him over to the uh, Gold Cup stage. Chase Rodman awaits his arrival. What an unbelievable race here tonight. Great stuff up front all night long here at the Gold Cup. And Kyle, for the first time in 10 years, you are back in victory lane at your home track, the Silver Dollar Speedway. But I feel like this one's just a little bit different. You're now a promoter of this place, and you win on the opening night of the Gold Cup. How are you feeling? Yeah, it feels, uh, feels great. Um, was a uh, fun track there, really technical and tricky um, up top. It was ice across until you got to the moisture against the cushion and uh, made sliders really sketchy. Um, just, I mean, you'd be off the throttle just going across super fast. And, um, you know, I knew my opportunity was if Ryan didn't get a good launch on the restarts, you know, two times in a row he didn't. He messed up along the cushion, uh, the restart before, and I almost slid him. And then uh, I guess... That must have had him just confused on what to do, and he peeled off and turned down, and I, I knew that was going to be my opportunity, and I uh, just had to slide across even quicker than the, the first time. So uh, my car felt really good, though, out front. Um, when I would hit it right, it was, like I said, it was tricky, but um, a lot of fun. So thanks to Kevin. Uh, works limited. It's cool. You know, this is his car. This is, uh, he's the owner of this one on the West Coast. So um, happy to get him a win as long as, or as well as all of our partners. So um, just happy to be out here. Happy to see a great crowd. Uh, cool to see all the balloons, too, during the, the four wide. I, I remember being a kid in the stands and doing that. So uh, hopefully we can get everybody to have some balloons come Saturday, and uh, it would be a pretty cool picture. Tell me about racing with Ryan Timms. Uh, he doesn't look like it, y'all, but I feel like him, seeing what he's been doing recently, I feel like 
he kind of looks like you behind the wheel a little bit. He's, he's hauling the mail out there. Yeah, he's obviously really good, and especially with the tracks like that. Uh, it seems like any young kid can rip a cushion like that. So um, I knew him on the front row was going to be really tough to beat. He was probably the guy that I looked at it on the lineup as the one you were going to have to beat to win. So uh, I had some good starts early to get me up there. And uh, like I said, things were crazy. And just you know, thankfully, he didn't, he didn't get some good launches there. Because if, if he did, I think it would have been hard to pass him just with you know, kind of how slick across it was. But um, either way, glad to get the job done. And I uh, look forward to head to Kansas now tomorrow. A lot of people will consider you, like uh, Dominic said, the greatest of all time or whatever, but just tell us how tricky it was to run the top. I feel like I saw you smoke the wall in the front stretch a couple times. It looked like it was extremely hard to run consistently. It was. It, it was really tricky, and it's, uh, it was hard to see, like, where there was holes and stuff against the cushion, and um, there's actually a lot of moisture up top against the, the front stretch wall, so uh, I, was, I was trying to get as close as I could to the wall just to get some extra grip you down the front stretch, but, um, you know, Lowell and everybody here did a great job on the track prep. We, we harp on Lowell all the time about, you know, the grease and how long it takes a hot lap and, and all that, but he always knows... Uh, he knows this place and knows you know, what he's got to do to give us the best surface in the future. So uh, huge thanks to Lowell and everything he does for, for us here at uh, Silver Dollar. And uh, he's like family to us. So um, I hope all you guys respect him as much as we do. Kyle's been harping on Lowell for 20 years now at this point. How about it for Kyle Larson here tonight? Second place finisher, Ryan Timms. Is he around here somewhere? Might have to go find him here. We're going to go find him. He is over here somewhere. He's a little shorter. There he is right there. Ryan Tim's getting a couple selfies in here, but Ryan, man, almost got the win here tonight, but uh, it seemed like on those last two restarts, you tried two different things and neither of them worked. And when you got a guy like Kyle Larson behind you, you can't be having those mistakes happening. Yeah, it kind of just seemed like, well, there on one of them restarts, he slid me and I got around him and I thought that was kind of my break there. And, we were going to be able to get him and put enough ground on him, but uh, yeah, it just kind of seemed like it was better to be in second than it was first, uh, at least in uh, some way, and um, it definitely stings, but uh, good job to Kyle. This is your first time here to Silver Dollar Speedway. I'm sure you've got a lot of laps on it on video games and whatnot, but uh, are you surprised to run second here tonight? Yeah, it's definitely a lot better than I expected, but right now I'd be less butthurt about running 13th and second, so... How about it for Ryan Sims? First time here to Silver Dollar Speedway, and he finishes up in second. James McFadden, I saw him walking around. He's right here. Well, James, um, you looked extremely fast there, and a couple times got up on the bike. I thought you were tipping over, but that battle between you and Sheldon and Logan and Brad and Caleb Henry, and uh, man, it just looked like every lap you had your hands full. Yeah, even by yourself, you had your hands full. It was pretty treacherous up there. Um, yeah, it's... You know, you dig yourself a hole, you start back there, and you you got to work your butt off to get there. I really wish we didn't get those restarts. I felt when we were all bunched up, I had a really good car, and um, just in the green white, like the green flag runs, I was really good. And then at the start of those uh, yellow flag runs, I wasn't real good. It took me sort of four or five laps to get rolling, but uh, third's third's not too bad. It would have been better to be one step off and and sort of be blocked into there for tomorrow, but. Uh, yeah, we, we socked early, we dug ourselves a really big hole and, uh, you know, the guys worked really hard and got the Ross Motorsport car back back up where it should be. So thank you to Dennis and Teresa. Uh, thanks to the crowd. It's it's super hot out there. Appreciate you guys being out here and uh, time for a beer. James McFadden finishes up in the third position in car number 83. Ryan Timms with a, an impressive second place finish once again and Kyle Larson getting his first win at Silver Dollar Speedway in 10 years tonight, John. Thank you, Chase Rodman. Here is the full field rundown. Kyle Larson, the winner in the 57. Second of the 5T of Ryan Timms. Third, the 83 of James McFadden. Fourth, the 49 of Brad Sweet. Fifth, the 17 M of Caleb Henry. Sixth, the 17 of Sheldon Hoddenshield. Seventh, the 92 of Andy Forsberg. Finishing eighth and getting tonight's KSE Hard Charger Award, the 83V of Sean Becker. Ninth to the 21 of Mitchell Facinto. And in tenth, the 83T of Tanner Carrick. Coming home, 11th, the 29 of Willie Croft. Twelfth, the 3Z of Brock Zierfoss. Thirteenth, car number 14. Corey Day, 14th, the 1S of Logan Shewhart, 15th, the 80, pardon me, the 53 of Jesse Adard, 16th, the 2K of Caleb Montgomery, 17th, the 33 of Dylan Bloomfield, in 18th, the 12J of John Clark, 19th, the 20G of Noah Gass, 20th, the 5V of Landon Brooks, 21st, the 55D of Dawson Hamas, finishing 22nd, the 18T of Tanner Holmes, 23rd, the 19 of Colby Thornhill, and the 24th, the 2X of Justin Sanders.
Well, Dominic Selzy, night number one for the World of Outlaws at the Gold Cup in the books. It was spectacular. Can only hope the next couple of nights are very similar. Your thoughts now after looking at this track, looking at what we had, knowing that you're in action tomorrow night. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I, I'm, I'm beefing up my notebook here. I know for sure uh, if it looks like it might have grip in the feature, tighten up anyways because it, it got glassy, kind of like what Kyle said. This is exciting. When it gets like that and it's almost pushed over the edge, big old meaty curb, it makes it really technical. And, and you, I mean, there before that last yellow, one of those last yellows, the top six, you could throw them under a blanket. You don't see that very often. You don't see that at big tracks. You see that here at, at Silver Dollar Speedway. So, uh, you know, for me, I'm just going to go to bed tonight thinking about what Ryan did and what Kyle did and, and uh, you know, James there late. And hope I can come out here and, and do what those three guys did. Now, you normally watch the races from down in the pit area or maybe somewhere in the stands, but sitting up here in the in the booth, does it give you a little different perspective as to maybe what to look for tomorrow, maybe what to do tomorrow when you get to the racetrack? Absolutely. Watching guys like, you know, like Kyle, Ryan, um, and Corey, I was really watching Corey a lot, the way they were sliding guys, when to choose to slide them short and to slide them long, uh, that, that's a huge factor in keeping your speed up and your mile per hour up. When you're at a local race, you can slide a guy, get to the cushion, and kind of drive away from him or, or even, you know, race with him for a few laps and it doesn't matter as much but with these guys when you slide somebody you want to put them away you don't want to race with them so um just kind of log in my memory banks on when they decided to slide guys short and where they ended their slide job in the corner just to remember you know what the cushion was like and what their cars did when they got there we certainly enjoyed having you here in the broadcast booth. We hope we get to do it again sometime very, very soon. Best of luck tomorrow night in your Gold Cup action. Thanks for having me, guys. Well, that'll do it for night number one of the Gold Cup Race of Champions. Those of you watching on Dirt Vision, once we wrap things up, we'll send it back to Dave Reef in the studio in Concord, North Carolina. For Chase Rodman downstairs, Troy Hennig here in the booth with the B-Mods and my broadcast partner, Dominic Selzy. My name's John Gibson. Good night, everyone.